welcome everyone. I'm Paul Danchek, Director of Executive Education Whoa. for the USC Sol Price School of Public Policy. So glad that you could be with all of us as we celebrate our graduates from the Executive Leadership Development Program, cohorts 37 and 38. A couple of things we should know before we get started today about Zoom. I imagine many of you are Zoom masters already. Uh, during today's celebration, I'm going to ask you to turn your cameras on and off at different times if you have the ability to do so. And if you'd like to use the chat feature, it's also open if you want to either send private messages or group messages, know that you're welcome to do so. Uh, for the view feature at the top, uh, you can either see us all in gallery mode where it looks like the Brady Bunch, um, as many of you are seeing now, or you can switch to the speaker view um, in its upper, the upper right-hand corner if you're not familiar where that is. We also have a 52-page uh, PowerPoint that we're going to show. Uh, right, Eleni, just to have some flashbacks from class. No boo hiss, academic humor. Welcome today um, for our celebration and really want to recognize this time and have this space to be able to recognize where we've been. For those of you who aren't familiar with ELDP, as we affectionately call it, um, it's a program that started eight years ago through the vision of the CEO's office and the director of HR with Lisa Garrett. And it evolved into this program um, where we recognize um, leadership happens at all levels within organizations. And when we get to certain levels within the organization, the leadership conversation shifts. And this program was really designed around the top executives within the county itself of recognizing current roles and roles that um, graduates are moving into um, over time. So thinking about those types of connections. The program is very rigorous and we recognize all the participants for their hard work um, over the last 13 weeks, about 45 instructional hours that included presentations and group projects and executive coaching. Um, and we also recognize our friends, family, colleagues that are part of this program as well, um, who are supporting the graduates as they're being able to move forward throughout the course itself. During today's celebration, we have a number of different speakers coming into play. We wanted to get started off this morning with introducing the CEO of LA County, who you know well, Fisia Davenport, who recorded a message for us as we started off our celebration today. Um, let's hear from her. Good morning, graduates. I'm picturing all of you in your caps and gowns right now, and that includes your chief deputies and deputy directors. Let's enjoy the pomp and circumstance of the occasion. This is your moment. It's my honor to salute all 32 of you representing 22 county departments at the Spring Executive Leadership Development Program virtual graduation. We've come a long way from eight years ago when we went out on a limb to develop a program that would support the needs of mid-level managers and succession planning efforts. Thanks to the efforts of the Department of Human Resources, the Quality and Productivity Commission, and our partners at USC, ELDP was launched and it is still going strong today. I'm incredibly proud that we continue to produce a deep bench of current and emerging leaders who are primed and ready to implement the progressive vision set by our Board of Supervisors. Leadership and fresh thinking are needed now more than ever. There is so much at stake and so many eyes across the region and the country that are watching us as we chart a bold policy course to uplift our communities in transformative ways. I hope the ELDP program has brought your skills and challenged and inspired you. Beyond the basic curriculum, you got to do a deeper dive into topics like motivation and engagement of teams, mindful approaches to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and ethics in public service. These are important to you individually and to us collectively as a county family. We often think of our graduations as the end, the culmination of hard work and time invested, whether you put in four years or 10 weeks. But today is a commencement, a new start in your approach to public service leadership and to motivating your teams to reach into our communities in deeper and more meaningful ways. Your journey parallels the county's journey. As a county, we're on a new course to do big things, alleviate poverty, reduce generational cycles of incarceration, break down the structures of racism, 
fight homelessness and revive our region from the economic impacts of COVID-19. I hope that you will take the skills you've learned back to your departments and continue the collaborative thinking that pushes innovation. And I'd like to remind you that your work over the past weeks is not just academic. Over the course of this program, we have seen the real world implementation of more than 140 group projects. The LA County Web Portal, the Financial Wellness Program, Active Shooter Training, the Women's Military and Veterans Program, Mobile Healthcare, and Library Pet Adoptions, just to name a few. This program is more than courses and assignments, it's an innovation lab. And the most important ingredient in the lab is you. Leaders like you have made the program what it is today, and you will help shape the program for tomorrow's up and coming executives. The ELDP program as of today is 687 graduates strong. Along the way, it has earned accolades from the Quality and Productivity Commission and the National Association of Counties. Thank you for being continuous learners and using your time, talents, and new tools to benefit your teams and departments. Thank you for your commitment to our county and the public we are privileged to serve. Congratulations again on this milestone and here's to your continued success. Thank you, Ms. Davenport for those remarks. Now, one of the Zoom features I should have warned us about and the cohort 37 and cohort 38 know that I love to clap during Zoom and clapping is a full physical effort for us. Um, it's not this little golf clap or the little reaction at the bottom of your screen. Um, we actually clap with our neighbors. So this is a time to turn your cameras if you have the ability to turn on your cameras. Uh, looks like many of you have. Christine, Nick, I'm looking at you guys. And let's give uh, Ms. Davenport a round of applause. Get your hands up and clap with your neighbors. Oh, uh, come on, wasn't that fun? Um, while we um, recognize that she wasn't able to join us in person, we do appreciate her joining us online and sharing those greetings with all of us. When we think about ELDP, we recognize that it started eight years ago, um, but really it couldn't have been possible without all the work and support from Lisa Garrett, the Director of Personnel, who the graduates know extremely well um, in a variety of capacities throughout the program delivery itself. Um, and when we think about ELDP, we try to model, and we do model, uh, the very best of leadership when, it, when we start talking about the idea of collaboration, of placing high emphasis on outcome and relationships, and recognizing that it's a conversation that continues to evolve over time between multiple parties, in this case, uh, between the county and USC. Um, and no one is better partner um, than Lisa Garrett and her team at, uh, at uh, Department of Human Resources. Lisa, Director of Personnel, where are you? I don't see you on my Brady Bunch screen. Would you like to say hello to the group? Yes, I would. I'm right next to you, Paul. I mean, you can't see me. But good morning, good morning to all of our graduates. Yay! Uh, to cohorts 37 and 38. And I see there are over at least 100 folks on uh, the Zoom this morning. That means you invited your family and friends and those from the departments. Uh, thank you for doing that. I know that there are some special guests that come out uh, that have come out this morning or are planning to be here. And I'm just going to get a shout out to the um, executives within the county that have come because without them, you would not be here. And uh, I just want to give a shout out to them because they support this program. And so I'm going to say their names and uh, let's uh, let's give them some claps. First, we have Erica, our um, alternate public defender. Yay! You see her on the screen. I think we might have Jeffrey Prang from uh, our assessor, not PTC, our assessor. He always says, Lisa, I don't collect taxes. Uh, our assessor, Jeffrey Prang. Uh, we might have also Arlene Barrera, who is our auditor controller. Yay! And uh, Don Harrison is going to be joining us if she's not already on. We just had a meeting this morning. Who is our acting county counsel? Thank you, Don. And I know Celia was not here earlier, but she might be. Uh, she was off on some days, some of the days this week. But just in case, Celia Zavala had uh, indicated she would be here and she's the executive officer for the Board of Supervisors, yes. 
Selwyn Hollins, who is over internal services. Uh, they are great participants of this program. Also, Norma Garcia Gonzalez from Parks and Recreation. Yay, and uh, Dean Logan, our registrar recorder. I know he says, thank you all for volunteering to be DSWs for the vote centers. Keith Knox, who is a great supporter of this program from, from Treasurer Tax Collector, and Otto Sorlazano, Acting Director of Weed Act. So give them a round of applause, yay. Now I have a few more and then we'll get started. Uh, we uh, have Al Oscar Valdez, the Auditor Controller Chief Deputy Director, another Joe Nikita, Chief Executive Office, also the Chief Deputy, Chief Deputy from uh, County Council, Nicole Davis Tinkham, Chief Deputy from the Board of Supervisor, Jeff Levinson, didn't he do a great job on Tuesday? Um, also from FIRE, we have Perry Events. From Internal Services, uh, Chief Deputy Director uh, Michael O. From uh, Veteran, uh, Military and Veterans Affairs, Acting Chief Deputy uh, Dimitri De Silva. Uh, from Public Defender, Chief Deputy Justine Isak. From Public Health, the Chief Deputy Director Megan McClure. From DPSS, Chief Deputy and Acting Director right now for DPSS, Jackie Contreras. Registrar Recorder, County Clerk, Chief Deputy, Jeremy Gray, and also from Treasurer Tax Collector, uh, we have Elizabeth Buenestro Ginsburg, uh, Chief Deputy Director. So we have a host of other, let's give them all a round of applause. We have a host of other executives that have joined us today. I wanna to say personally, congratulations to you all for your hard work over these weeks. This is, wasn't an easy program, especially when you have your regular work to do, but it will be well worth it. Ms. Davenport has said it all. I don't even have to uh, continue with that, but I do want to thank our, um, our DHR team for all the hard work that we do, our team does to make this a great program for you and also our partners at USC Saul Price School. Let's give it up for them, Paul, Dan, Jack, Yelani, Tommy, and all the others who uh, really put uh, you first in uh, developing uh, you as leaders for the County of Los Angeles. And so Paul has already said it, but this program has been in existence since like 2014. And over the time we have had 687 graduates. And I can say that a significant number of the graduates from ELDP have actually been promoted to higher ranks within the County of Los Angeles. I do thank you for being continuous learners. I think there's no, uh, being a continuous learner, we all have to do that, right? Because our work changes, our environment changes, and we must continue to evolve as that happens. So I'm going to stop talking now, Paul, but I do want to say thank you for developing yourself, which also impacts your teams, which impacts the county, which impacts all the 10 million residents that we serve. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being in this program and for taking what you learn to the masses. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all, Paul. I'll turn it back over to you. Let's give Lisa a big round of applause. Get your hands up. <laughs> we also get our workout during this hour together. Lisa, it's always such a pleasure and joy working with all of you um, and your team. And certainly it wouldn't be possible without Ronnie, Matt, Karen, and so many others that support the program uh, throughout our time together. This year, uh, we have a special guest as our keynote speaker, and Lisa mentioned um, where our graduates go um, once they're part of this program and how they advance within the county. I mean, we really want to recognize uh, one of the graduates who joined us about five or six years ago uh, from ELDP, um, and her name is uh, Erica Nzuatigli, and you know her affectionately well as the alternate public defender. Erica, where are you? Come hey, on. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> I know, so um, is it time for me to say a few words, Paul? It's, it sure is. <laughs> okay, yay. Um, 
So I want to say hi and good morning to everybody. I don't know if you can see me or not, but um, as uh, Paul mentioned, there's different ways to see people on screen. So I can only see a few of you, but I know I like uh, Fisia, I'm envisioning all of you and your happy faces. And I want to be part of the choir here that is congratulating you because as Paul mentioned, I myself was I participated in the ELDP program. I'm one of the graduates and I can tell you that I am a better leader manager for it. And so I wanna be one of the first to congratulate you and acknowledge your accomplishment, your hard work as it has been mentioned many times so eloquently. It is not easy. Um, it, is, it is hard work and we. I wanna thank you for taking time to sign up. I know many of you probably when you were either asked to sign up or, or encouraged to sign up, some of you probably thought, I don't have the bandwidth to take on one more thing. And, um, but you did it, you, you did it. And I wanna congratulate you. And you took the, it's like 14 weeks. I, I went through the curriculum and I looked at everything and I said, if it's it's evolved, I was cohort number three, and now we're here at 37 and 38. So yay! <laughs> Congratulations to the program as well. But um, I saw the curriculum and I thought, wow, I want to join again because it, there are so many things that you learn. There are some new aspects of it, like diversity that's very important and near to uh, dear to my heart and to the county. And, um, but at some point we do have to take what we learned and put it into action. Um, so let me affirm all of you that having taken this class, you are now 100% better managers, better leaders, better executives. Um, I know that probably you thought coming into the class, well, I already know a lot of this. I already know how to encourage people. I already know how to work hard. But the program is a gem and it's amazing and it gets us all to that next level. There are some really nuanced teaching about how we can become better managers. And I still use many, many of the things that many of the topics that I learned while at, EAD, at ELDP. So um, I want you to know that congratulations to you because you have just by doing this class has stepped up your game. I also want to acknowledge the, the tremendous work done by the Department of Human Resource and USC Seoul Price School of Public Policy to create a leadership development program when you already know you have managers who think that they know um, a lot about managing and they've been doing it for a while and you are able to highlight exactly the areas that we need to improve on. And so I wanna thank Lisa and your team. I wanna thank Paul, Eleni now, who I see Tommy there, who is my Eleni, <laughs> um, who, um, and the team that you guys um, put together to help really teach us to get to that next level that I keep talking about. Because it is important to learn how to remind people of their mission, remind people of how to get people to move together into a mission of a department. I wanna thank the department heads or the supervisors that are here in this space, celebrating their managers, because it is important to let the up and coming managers know that we care about the fact that they're learning and making our departments better, and that together we're going to continue to provide great work. And why is this important? Because we do provide great work um, to the community. I also, last but not least, want to thank our CEO and our Board of Supervisors for supporting this program. And Paul and Lisa said it best, but I want to take a moment to say that their leadership and support of ELDP really helps this culture that they um, have created for us in the county of innovation and diversity. And not only by having programs like ELDP, do they encourage us to be innovative and look at diversity, but they're expecting it from us. And so they're giving us the tools, right? They're giving us to the tools to be the leaders 
that are going to create innovation for the county. Because being county employees means that we care about providing great services to the community. And so I'm the supervisors want to make sure that in each and every department, the people that are growing and are being leaders and are continuing to give those services are people that understand that there needs to be innovation, creativity, desire. And we learn all of that here through ELDP. So I wanna, again, congratulate you for doing the program because um, like I said, government uh, and all that we do needs to have these continuous leaders that remember to provide these services. And all of us saw how much it was needed during the last two years, during the pandemic, when everybody, things were shut down and, and businesses were shut down and everybody turned to the government to say, well, how am I going to get housing? How am I going to get food? Justice reform. How am I going to get living wages? What am I going to do that now that my business is shut down? And all of this are theme service deliveries that we do. And we had to learn lessons quickly and innovatively and in how to provide that. And I turned to my teachings at ELDP to help me get through it. And I know many of the other um, executives. So when I started with ELDP, I was, um, I was a head deputy and then I moved up, but I'll get to that. Um, I think that the experiences that we have teach us, of course, and we lived through a really big experience through the pandemic, but the real learning comes when we reflect upon that experience. So I would like to begin by reflecting a little bit upon myself and my experience at ELDP. So a little bit about myself. I am the Los Angeles alternate public defender. I run the second largest indigent defense firm. Um, basically my department re uh, represents people accused of a, of a crime. We take the cases where the public defender cannot represent the client due to a conflict of interest. In a county like Los Angeles, where there are 10 million residents, that means we deal with a lot of cases. We see over 40,000 felony cases a year, and the ones that the public defender cannot take because of the conflict come to my office. So I'm very happy that that's where I found my calling in, and in service to give um, representation and a voice to people that are accused of a crime. And many of us have a calling in a different way and why we came to um, county service. I am the daughter of immigrants who instilled upon me strong work ethic and a belief in service and a belief that a good government job has security, but also an ability to give service to people. And so luck will have it that I did. I went to UCLA undergrad, which is a little bit, you know, when I started the USC Soul Price, I thought, what? But yes, they did a great job <laughs> and um, passed the bar and landed at my dream job at the public defenders and then went over to the alternate public defenders five years later, which is another big dream job. And this is what I reflect on. I was an attorney and I was just working, doing my thing for misdemeanors, then went to felonies. When one day my supervisor my boss, actually the public defender, came to me and asked me to take the role of training new attorneys that we um, that she hired. And I thought to myself, I can't do it. I never have taught anybody. I never. So I, I even said to her, I don't know. I'm not comfortable with that. And so then she said, Erica, I believe in you and you should take this opportunity. That was the first time that I made a mistake and a failure, like never say no to an opportunity. And so that's what I want to impart to you guys. I know that you learned that in ELDP when I lived it and I reflect upon it, I feel like I have to tell people again that when opportunities come, and I know that you might be in a comfortable position, living your best life, doing your best work, and now you're asked to do either a stretch assignment or another project, and you might think to yourself, I don't know if I can do it. I'm telling you, you can do it, especially after having done ELDP. You have the tools. Take when you 
when you are when you know you're a little bit too comfortable, sometimes even take on the ability to walk into your boss's office and ask for a stretch assignment or something that is going to challenge you. I think that one of the things that we found when you go through ELDP is when you do that big project. And as Vicia mentioned, many of those projects now have become part of the county. When we worked together on those groups, it was tough. It was tough to, to get through that project. But knowing that you have done that lets you know that you're going to be able to continue to grow and create new projects for the county that then allows better services to be delivered to the community. Um, I remember many, many of the, we use, I don't know if you guys still use the Bob Denhart book of management. I don't know what you're using now, but I remember some of the lessons. And one of them, we had this activity about communication where somebody is standing behind you and they're describe. one person is describing and the other person is drawing. And we had some crazy drawings that came out of it because what we learned is not only is communication important, but one of the biggest lessons about being a better manager is listen, listening, listen, listen, listen. I remember reading about it and having a whole discussion. And to this day, I still use it. So my trajectory was that I was a head deputy when I did this program, learned a lot from it, took some of the advice, then became a division chief in my office, then from there, the chief deputy, and then lo and behold, um, the department head. And a lot of the opportunities that I that came along the way came because of some of obviously hard work, some lessons from ELDP, but some with the connections that I made at ELDP. That is the that is another reflection. ELDP, and you're gonna probably hear from some of your other cohorts and your colleagues. Um, the connections at ELDP, it's a great lesson. It's networking is important. And sometimes you have to break out of your shell. And it started, you know, at ELDP, learning about other county departments, learning about what other people did. And you find that there are some incredibly bright people. Um, talk to them, continue these relationships, use all the foundation of starting these relationships that you have now um, started and continue them. Because along the way, I was able to use those relationships and other projects that I needed throughout um, my career here at the Alternate Public Defenders. So I can tell you that um, th th that is one of the major pluses of the program and use it. And I wanna share with you one last story that when you have your one-on-ones, one -on you are giving a lot of coaching. I remember going to my coach and we talked about the fact that I didn't think I had the bandwidth to move up because I had two kids, they were young and I was at, I felt like the breaking point, but she helped me and we talk through it about putting work-life balance. And we were talking about work-life balance before people talked about it in the pandemic. And she truly helped me set up some boundaries that let me grow as a mother and let me grow as an executive. So I want you to know that all that coaching that you got, and each of you had an individual one, and I'm sure that there were lessons and trajectories, take it to heart. Use it, use everything you learned because it certainly helped me put some boundaries with work and with um, all the work that we do. And it helped me grow in my career. And so I want to thank ELDP for all they did for me. I want to congratulate all of you for doing the, having done the hard work. I'm glad we're in this space celebrating you because hard work should be celebrated. And congratulations for picking up your new tools and onward to doing great things for the county. Congratulations, graduates. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Erica. Get your hands up. Let's clap with our neighbors. 
Erica, what an inspirational speech. I love it when you're reinforcing the idea around those stretch assignments, whether it's in our current roles or getting into future roles and the role of connections and this idea of learning quickly and innovation, um, all things that we try and model within this program. Uh, very much appreciate you joining us today um, and being such a proud supporter of the program itself. Uh, before recognizing the graduates, I do need to recognize a few others in this space. Uh, Lisa gave a shout out to the executive team within the county. I want to recognize some of our presenters who are able to join us. Uh, Lisa is one of our presenters uh, focused on um, motivation, employee motivation. So Lisa, it's always great to have you as a presenter in the program. Um, I see Alexander Roman is on. Um, Alexandru is uh, from the California State University, San Bernardino, focusing on project management. Management. Uh, Tommy Royson, who uh, many of you have known throughout uh, the history of ELDP, kicking it off with us uh, way back when, uh, teaches sessions on change leadership and leadership fundamentals. Uh, Eleni Mastarakis uh, focuses on project management and executive coaching. And Peter Wright focuses on political acumen. They're part of a larger 11-person team. Uh, so thanks to all of you for uh, creating space for us on a Friday morning to be able to join and celebrate with us. I also want to give a big shout out uh, to Marlena Bandery, um, who will support us throughout the duration of the program. Um, thanks, Marlena. Um, and Karen McNeil, I want to formally thank you as well, because certainly um, this bus wouldn't be rolling without um, all of your support to make it possible. Thank you, Karen. Let's give them all a big round of applause. Get your hands up. As we recognize the graduates, we're going to call out names. But before we do that, um, we always like to hear from our graduates um, because the program um, becomes very personal, as Erica has shared, of uh, going through the program itself. And Erica, by the way, you're here with many of your, your colleagues, um, both professionally and uh, graduates of the program. And uh, for those graduates that are joining us today, I saw a bunch of names coming in and super excited to be able to see you. I also want to recognize you. If you can go down... Uh, look at the bottom of your screen and look at the reactions and click on raise your hand. Well, what that does is puts you to the front of the line. So we're able to see you um, all on the first screen. So graduates of ELDP, um, raise your hand so we can recognize you and uh, be, safe, be able to celebrate you as well. So this is current graduates and graduates from past cohorts. There's a bunch of us. Oh, Justine's here. Oh, cool. And Ivory and Susan. Oh my gosh. And Marilyn. Oh, very cool. Uh, let's give them all a big round of applause. Thanks for joining us and being part of today's celebration. Uh, recognize we have both cohorts 37 and 38 with us. And kicking off our participant remarks um, from cohort 37 is Vilma Gonzalez from the Public Social Services uh, Department. Vilma, where are you? I'm here. <laughs> Can you see me? Can you see me? <laughs> I'm Vilma Gonzalez from the Department of Public Social Services, and on behalf of my teammates, Jeff Klein, representing County Register before the department, John Howison from the Department of Mental Health, and Jacqueline Indian from LA County Library, we thank you for the opportunity to participate in such an online program as the Executive Leadership Development Program. It has been a privilege to take part in such an amazing experience filled with opportunities to share ideas for professional and personal growth. We value the support from our peers in discussing real life managerial and executive dilemmas. We thank our instructors for providing us with thought provoking discussions, discussions that range from topics such as diversity, equity, inclusion, team building and engagement. To our champions, Amy Cows, Carl Cooper, and Diane Iglesias, we express our utmost sincere gratitude for guiding us in the right direction, giving us valuable feedback, and for saving us from writing what we could have been, what could have even been a 30-page document. We extend a tremendous shout out to our immediate bosses, family, and loved ones for their unconditional support as we navigate it through this professional journey. Lastly, but not least, we thank the partnership with USC Price, School of Public Policy, and LA County Department of Human Resources for allowing us, cohort 37, the privilege 
to participate in this program with a stress-based approach. Thank you for nurturing and developing these transformational leaders so we can better assist our community with innovative programs and provide services for our LA County residents. As the saying goes, knowledge is power. But remember my fellow teammates, knowledge is indeed power, but it's not meaningful if we don't put it in action. Congratulations, Forward 37, class of 2022. Thank you, Velma. Round of applause. <laughs> We're on OT Barrows from Beaches and Harbor. Warren. Good morning, everyone. And it's a privilege to speak on behalf of my teammates, uh, Patricia Soltero Sanchez from Rancho Los Amigos, and Steve Niwa from Office of Inspector General, and Frank Foreman from Fire Department. Um, so they nominated me because of my smooth, silky voice. Um, <laughs> uh, they wanted me to do a, an, imperson an impersonation of. Uh, of Barry White, but I'll save that for karaoke. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm now known as a, a, a devotee of Mr. Rogers, which is true. I did grow up as a latchkey kid. And um, Fred Rogers attributed a quote to his mom. Uh, he, said, he said that his mom said, you know, in the context of the, the world we live in and how scary it can, can sometimes be when we watch the news and see everything that's going on, she said to, to young Fred, always look for the helpers. There's always someone who is trying to help. So I, I take that um, to heart in the context of ELDP, that ELDP is a wonderful opportunity for us as county managers and leaders to break down silos, build community amongst each other, and, and understand that we're not alone in this. We all have someone we can lead on, and this ELDP program is a really great opportunity for us to continue building those networks, networking, knowing, hey, I have this problem, I can pick up the phone and I can call uh, Rodney Collins, right? So this is really wonderful, uh, a way for, um, for all of us to continue growing in our county careers. And I, I wanna do a little bit of uh, uh, gratitude here. You know, this is my 18th year in the county. I, when I was very new to the county, I, I had the privilege of uh, participating in the, well, in the LA County Learning Academy, which was what it was called at the time and participated in the um, Administrative Analyst Certificate Program. And I have to say, I still keep, keep in touch with some of the folks that I um, was in that program with, and it really set me up, I think, for, for success moving forward. And I do want to thank uh, my current uh, Department Director, uh, Gary Jones, and uh, retired Chief Deputy Carrie Silverstrom for recruiting me over to Team DBH. And um, I want to thank Amy Caves for, uh, for the opportunity to promote and Gosh, I have the best job in the county from my humble opinion. So uh, I'm very, very grateful for that. And uh, to the county and USC for putting together this very high quality program for all of us to uh, take advantage of. And uh, I wanna leave everyone with uh, a paraphrase from a, a quote from pop culture. Um, and I'm, some of you might, might remember this, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, turn on, tune in, and get better. So turn on, become more sensitive to your consciousness, needs and struggles. And this gets back to that, you know, be sure to put on your own oxygen mask before you start to help your neighbors. Um, tune in, meaning engage and interact with the world around you. You know, we, we have so much stuff going on and so many distractions. Don't be shy, put that iPhone on do not disturb and really focus on what you have in front of you and give all that you can to each day and get better. Here we are doing it. We're putting, a, putting our money where our mouths are. Um, adopt that growth mindset. Stay hungry and stay humble and, um, and just keep going forward because uh, there's so much that we can give to this life and we get it all back. So thank you so much, everyone. It's been my pleasure to be with you. Thanks, Warren. Round of applause. Warren, you do have a smooth voice. And now we're all saying, can we get out with karaoke with this guy? Okay, Don Miranda, we're passing the mic to you, Child Support Services. Thank you so much. Um, good morning, everyone. My group, Araceli Munoz from Auditor Controller, Shaw Miller from ISD, and Ruben Lopez from Parks and Recs. 
would like to thank the U.S. team and DHR for facilitating our continuing, uh, continuing education. In these 14 weeks, we have learned many practical skills that will enhance our leadership abilities and many transformative approaches to the way we do our job and interact with those around us. But more important than that, ELD, ELDP has taught us to be present in every aspect of the process to truly absorb the experience. ELDP is more than classroom instruction, tactics and strategies. It provides us with an opportunity, opportunity to learn from our peers. We were challenged to work in a group dynamic. I learned so much from my group, Ruben, Shaw, and Araceli, as we worked on our group project, as well as from all the other members of co uh, cohort 37. Our weekly meetings, um, the weekly meetings with my team uh, was a nice respite from a sometimes very hectic day. We kept each other on task. We made jokes about our day. We went on virtual vacations as team members logged in from hotel rooms while away on family vacations. Um, ELDP is more than checking a box in our professional development. It's about bringing people together in a human space to recognize the talents they possess, learning from our peers, and at the same time, receiving jewels of information. Thank you everyone for this experience. Thanks, Don. Round of applause. Rock star status. Bibiana Navarro, Treasurer and Tax Collector. Hi, everybody. I'm Bibiana Navarro with Treasurer and Tax Collector Department. Um, I'd like to share a few words on behalf of myself and my team members, Mark Rajula from Health Services, Frank Diaz from The Assessor, and Lucille Rayford from Public Health about our experiences going through the ELDP. Our team overall had very positive experiences both in the collective ELDP group and in our team project. The time's a little stressful as we all have our responsibilities, but we definitely made it happen. Um, we felt that this program not only provided us the great opportunity to develop ourselves individually, but we we're also able to interact with and connect with people from other departments, which we otherwise wouldn't have been able to meet because our positions are so very different. The professionalism, the professionalism, knowledge, and collaboration of this entire group was amazing, and our instructors. Um, we valued the insights, sharing of ideas, and thought-provoking topics discussed throughout the program, and we all especially enjoyed the breakout sessions where our conversations led to deeper understanding of certain topics, and through some of these discussions and hearing others' experience, other experiences, there was kind of a sense of comfort kind of knowing that we all are faced with similar challenges in our own positions. We, hear, we heard the different perspectives and words of encouragement, and that's invaluable and it's something that will absolutely benefit us not only in our current positions, but as we grow in our county careers. We're thankful to the county and our departments, and thank you, TTC, for giving us and me this opportunity to participate in ALDP and to our champions, Julie from Child Support Services and Cynthia from DCFS for guiding us through our project. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Bibiana. Loved it. And rounding out Kilhor 37, Lainey Tennant from the Public Defender. Lainey. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. On behalf of my project group, uh, Sean Emile from DPSS, Diana Turan from the DA's office, and Ernesto Bobadilla from the WEDAX. We wanna first say thank you to our amazing instructors, Eleni, Marlena, Paul, and Tommy. You guys created such a safe space for all of us to be vulnerable, share our thoughts, our ideas, and our stresses. You motivated us, you gave us tools to truly grow and to be more effective and creative leaders. And for that, we thank you. In addition to the great content that you provided, our most memorable part of the year was getting to know our classmates in cohort 37 and to share the stories in the breakout rooms and know that we are all going through similar experiences. So to cohort 37, congratulations, we did it. On that first day, many of us were feeling pretty overwhelmed at the thought of this 20 page paper and the speech that we had to present to the board of supervisors, oh my goodness. But once we met our awesome champions, Maggie Carter and John Cook, we were so encouraged and empowered that we all did it. We got through it. Uh, finally, I want to thank the county for investing the time and resources in this important program. 
Uh, one common thread for us all as leaders is that we all serve a very vulnerable population. And at the end of this, what you did was you, did was, you made us better leaders to go out and help those vulnerable people that we serve in the community in a new and more creative way. And for this, we thank you. Thanks, Lainey. Appreciate the reminder of the communities that we serve. I mean, it gets to the heart of the work that we do within public service. Uh, recognizing cohort 38, Diane Iglesias, Child and Family Services. Diane, where are you? I'm right here. This is so exciting. And I think everybody's spirit has totally been captured in, in all the comments. I think we've all found this to be an incredible experience. Um, before I came to this class, my guiding mantra was I learned from um, Admiral McRaven. He was talking at the University of Texas. He's an accomplished Navy SEAL, and he went through this whole process about what it's like to be a Navy SEAL. And he was pointing out that in the average lifespan, we each meet 10,000 people. So if we could change the lives of 10 people, and they change the lives of 10, and they've changed the lives of 10, in, in five generations, we could change the lives of 12 million people. That's the whole county of LA. That was pretty motivating. Um, and But his secret is the bottom line secret to him, the changing the world is make your bed. Make your bed every morning. Because if you make your bed every morning, then you start out doing something, you've accomplished the goal. And then the next task, you go on and you have pride throughout the day. And so in starting with that very simple thing, you recognize small things matter and you're motivated to do great things. So that was always my thing. And then I came, I'm pretty good with teams and I'm a big cheerleader of everybody. And then I got into my position and that's kind of how I went. And then I was voluntold into this program and I went, oh goodness, we're like, we have so much to do and so little time. And I got my own chair. I don't need that. Um, and so then the first day we came in and I was intrigued because we got a box of swag, which was like, uh, what is this? A magic wand and some sunglasses and some funky stuff. I'm like, this is not going to be like all theory. There's something very engaging about this. So I started out a little bit intrigued. And then the first um, the mantra that, that, that meant something to me was leadership is a matter of how to be, not how to do. And throughout the process, um, this was, it was a visceral experience and it was, it was internal, external, and we got to share the staff and everyone created a safe space where we could read and understand very simple terms, very practical um, suggestions. And then we could go into our teams and learn in the county, we're all going through the same sort of things and what it takes to do change on a, on a major league level and the skills that it takes. And now I'm gonna go back to my notes. Um, <laughs> some of the things that we learned to do were um, how to function in a, in a team and really um, good technical information about that how to navigate change successfully, how to manage conflict, how to communicate clearly, which I may not be practicing right now. But all, we learned, we're able to learn all of those things. I took notes that I have highlighted and tabbed because I'm going to go back to those things as I have what I'm calling my legacy project. And it helps you go through each, each of the tasks throughout your day and be very intentional about what you're doing how you're influencing, what you're bringing to the table, how you're empowering others, how you're recognizing others, and ultimately how you're achieving that mission at the end of the day. So I am so thankful for this project. And all I have to say is if you want to change the world, go to ELDP and make your bet. Thanks, Diane. Round of applause. It's a great book, by the way. Carl Cooper, Parks and Rec. Well, it's hard to follow Diane, but we're going to give that a try. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, Carl Cooper. I'm the deputy director with uh, Los Angeles County Parks, uh, affectionately known as uh, Department of Fun. And uh, we made sure we talked about that during our class session. Um, you know, I, like Diane, I wrote a few notes down that I wanted to kind of hit so I wasn't just talking. But uh, after this past week uh, and actually going through all the presentations, um, you know, I had to pause for a moment because I was so impressed with not only this group, but the program as a whole. I mean, it was an outstanding week and it made me pause. I mean, I've been with the county for five years. Um, I come from working for almost 30 years with the city of Los Angeles and their Department of Recreation and Parks. And, and uh, we need to take a pause in that we didn't have this in the city of L.A. And the city, city of L.A. was great. It was. Uh, we need to take a time to pause that 
you know, this class and having this opportunity is something that's really special. And I think it really builds what I know Lisa and others have talked about, about the county family. So, you know, I want to take a minute and thank some folks and, you know, say thank you for the opportunity to take part in the class. You know, I want to thank, um, you know, our Department of Human Resources led by our wonderful leader, Lisa Garrett, and, and USC and the Seoul uh, Price School of Public Policy. You know, what they put together, this award-winning executive leadership development program, you know, let me be honest. Um, when I was asked to take part of this class, you know, I wasn't super willing. I was too busy. You know, what we've all talked about. Everybody, I see my cohorts over here in 38 smiling because we all talked about how busy we were. And this is what we didn't sign up for. But, um, you know, what I've learned over the years is, you know, something that's good or good for you, you make time for it. And, and sort of like Dan said, after that first class, I went home and I think I told my wife, you know, this is going to be beneficial not only for me, but I feel for all of us. Um, you know, we got opportunity to be blessed each week with a great cross section of, of talented professors who, you know, who led our sessions. But, you know, let me be very frank. I believe we gained the most from the interaction with each other. I mean, uh, you know, the stories that were told, the work issues that we discussed, you know, how we lead or led our department, our staff, you know, was the best overall part of the learning that I that I took from um, this class. Um, you know, we discussed leadership, uh, DEI, we discussed, discussed communications, vision planning, uh, partnerships. But, uh, you know, what was great was, you know, the ways that we lead uh, our departments and lead our staff and the interactions that, you know, we made you know, really, I think is eventually going to make this a better LA County family. Um, you know, to paraphrase this, you know, one of one of our core 38 folks said, you know, I got so much more out of the program than I expected. And it's largely thanks to getting to know all of you. And they were talking about our core 37 or 38, but also core 37. Um, you know, I look forward to when I have an opportunity to reach out to, you know, one of my colleagues here to solve a problem, to work on a project, to work through something that's happened. And the funny thing is already started. We're already talking about certain things we'd like to see and certain projects we'd like to lead or someone has a project that they did that they want information on something that may be what I did. So, you know, with that, I can talk all day about all the great things that we did over the last, you know, 13, 14 weeks. But, you know, I just, um, you know, I wanna say thank you again to our human resource department, to USC, uh, and, and Paul and your folks and, you know, really assisting us in, in making this already great LA County uh, a better county workforce. So, you know, I can talk forever. I will continue, but I'm going to stop because you know what? I can't wait to hear how Lisa is going to close this out for us. So thank you all. And to my colleagues, I look forward to when we get together. Thanks. Thanks, Carl. Get your hands up. Carl, I, I think you found the secret of what we try and do from the delivery side. Um, that's great the space for some deep conversations to take place because we know that they're there, they're right under the surface, um, but we often don't have the opportunity to be able to dive in that space because we're mind goes towards outcomes. Uh, so thanks for bringing that up and recognizing the power of the cohort. Lisa Proft, treasurer and tax collector, where are you? Here, here, here. I'm here, thank you. Wow, thanks Carl for setting me up, no pressure there. Um, <laughs> I am Lisa Proft. I'm with the TTC, and I'm delighted to speak uh, for just a very short moment um, after my wonderful colleagues in cohort 38. This has been a magnificent experience all the way around, um, and I just echo everything that everyone has said so far. Congratulations to all of you who've done a tremendous amount of work. It was a bit of a heavy lift at times, and uh, look at it. We got through. This is just wonderful. A few thoughts, a few takeaways. Um, cohort 38 was amazing. Just an amazing group of individuals who uh, are, we're all similarly situated. We're all in the cam uh, county family and we're all striving to do the best that we can do with, within the boundaries that we all work. And it was just wonderful to have that interaction with colleagues at this level to be able to talk about all these really important issues. I am just thrilled to have uh, been able to get to know Diane and Amy and Carl and Julie and Yolanda and Marco and John and Monica and 
Cynthia and David and Maggie, and they're all from different departments, and it's just been wonderful to be able to interact with them. So a couple of words uh, just for us to remember, be present. Tell you, that's one of the biggest challenges, I think, for a person who's in, um, who works for the county is because we are required to do so many different things all the time and almost pride ourselves in being able to multitask. But focusing and being present at one time with another group of people has been invaluable. It's uh, taught me how to be more present in my own meetings with my own staff, in my own interactions. And I have found that I actively listen more as a result of this e e things I've learned in ELDP. And I also am, am really working with my staff to um, help them to listen, actively listen. Be your best you. Show up and be your best you. Everyone around you deserves your best you. And how do you do that? Well, you have to take time for yourself. You have to have a little self-care. Just a few, a few, uh, uh, what was it, breathing exercises that we did. These different techniques that we had were really helpful, um, especially in a very, very busy day. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we do serve an amazing county of people who need us desperately. And desperately in the sense of, LA County is the safety net. LA County is where, where we help people, whether, whether you're frontline, you know, hospitals and fire and sheriff, or whether you are a support department, we're still the safety net, all of us, each one of us is the safety net for our constituents. So we need to be our best us so that when people come to us, they all have a need that we can help fulfill it. We can do the best that we can do in serving those people. Serve others, serve others as you would want to be served, right? Is that not the best rule? I think it's called the golden rule. Um, we are changing culture. Those of us in this class, we are committed to really change culture. That's what I learned in ELDP is that one person can make a change, which is pretty phenomenal when you think about 112,000 people who work for LA County. So be the change, obviously you've heard this a million times, be the change you wanna see, but really that's what we're doing. Through this class, we're learning how to make changes to ourselves internally and to hopefully implement changes around us. So last thing I'll leave you with, don't despise the small beginnings. When you're in the class and working or when you're working up the ladder in your career, the people that you meet all around you may end up being your boss. Um, you just never know who you're gonna work with who then will be your boss. It's so fascinating. I've been with the county 25 years. People who are now department heads in a few areas are people that were my coworkers. So it, you just never know how that's gonna pan out. Last thing, one person can change the world. One person can absolutely change the world. There are a thousand examples. I'll leave you with Candy Leitner. Candy Leitner, she was a mom who unfortunately had a child die because of a drunk driver. She turned into mad. She turned into legislation. She changed the world. And there are a thousand examples of her, uh, more examples than we could probably ever even think today. I mean, you, you know, obviously Gandhi and Mother Teresa, and you know, the list goes on and on and on. But I am inspired through ELDP and through these techniques that we have learned and the conversations with my colleagues to want to be that change agent. And I hope you do too. Congratulations for all your hard work, each of you, really, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. So inspiring. Man, loved it. Um, for those of you um, that are uh, with us from the audience side, know that uh, these seven represent uh, one quarter of the participants that went through this spring. Um, and each of them, I wish we could hear from everyone, um, but be sure to carve out some time just to call up some people and talk to them about their experience and talk to them about this leadership space. Because it really is about building that community um, and making a difference from where we stand and recognizing that we all have a role to play. And it's allowing us to be able to be in that space collectively um, that makes this work so powerful.
A couple of things are going to happen after I announce all the graduates' names. So a couple of moving pieces coming into the mix. One is a recognition that uh, we want to celebrate each of the award recipients, uh, each of the graduates themselves. Feel free to use the chat feature as I'm calling out someone's name to give them some kudos and love. You're welcome to do that in that chat feature and just let that explode. Um, after we conclude our formal time together, we'll open up some breakout rooms and Eleni already have it teed up um, where you can go in and pull in um, some of your friends friends, colleagues, uh, just to hang out together in this space uh, for a while. We're willing to stay open and happy to stay open as long as um, you're collectively meeting. And a group photo, um, and this is for cohort 37 and 38. Um, at the very end, we'll ask um, those that are current graduates to keep their cameras on. I mean, if you're not a graduate, turn your camera off, and then we'll let you know we can turn your camera back on. It helps skew everyone together so we can take a group photo. Now, this is the moment that you've all been waiting for, the recognition of our graduates. A big round of applause to all of our graduates before we get started. Woo! Okay, here they come. Are you ready? Alphabetically by department from the assessor's office, Frank Diaz. From the auditor controller, um, Araceli uh, <laughs> Nunez. Um, oh, Araceli, I've been practicing your name all morning. From Beaches and Harbor, Harbors, Amy Caves, and Warren Oitiberos. From the chief executive office, John Cook. From Child Support Services, Don Miranda. And Julie Watson from Children and Family Services, Cynthia McCoy Miller and Diane Iglesias from County Council, Maggie Carter from the District Attorney's Office, Diane Turan from the Executive Office, Board of Supervisors, uh, Stephen Niwa from the Fire Department, Frank Foreman from Health Services, Mark Philip Bredula and Patty Soltera Sanchez from Internal Services, Shaul Mirla, Millar, from Mental Health, uh, John Howison, from Parks and Rec, Ruben Lopez and Carl Cooper, from the Public Defender's Office, Mary Tennant and Marco Sines, from Public Health, Lucille Rayford, Public Library, Jacqueline Ingenjian and Yolanda DeRamus, from Public Social Services, Sean Emil and Vilma Gonzalez. From Regional Planning, David De, uh, De Garcia. From Register Recorder's Office, Jeff Klein and Monica Flores. From Treasurer and Tax Collector, Bibiana Navarro and Lisa Proft. And Workforce Development, Ernesto Babadilla. Let's give them a big round of applause for all their work. Congratulations, graduates. Lisa, final word before we break off. Congratulations to all the graduates. I know some of the uh, departments separated from your names, but we know who you are and you do too. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being voluntold. But actually, after you got here, you had a wonderful experience. See? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing great things from each of you as you continue on your county career. Thanks for making the county look great. And thanks, USC, and thanks to the DHR team for awesome work. Yay! Kudos thanks, to you all. Yay! Man, appreciate all of you bringing your A game this spring. I know it's hard to do with all the other duties that you have assigned, um, but really appreciate how you brought it each week um, as we dove into some of these leadership topics together. Congrats, everyone! Woo! That's the fastest 13 weeks of your life, I know. <laughs> First started, you're like, is this program ever going to end? Now that it's concluded, you're like, we want more. <laughs> That's the nature of the beast. All right, everyone, enjoy your afternoon and look forward to seeing you uh, when we're able to meet in person at some point in the future. Bye, everybody.